So I'm here with these three flywheels from the Porsche 911, and I thought it might be cool to compare and contrast them. This is a G50, G50, 915 in various forms, both stock and aftermarket and Porsche lightweight. So I thought it might be good to do some testing on these before they go back in the car. The rotating mass is important, and I'll try to explain why in this video. So check it out. The clutch disc is present in all three of these models, so this is as, as it would be on the car. This one weighed in at 28.8 pounds. The stock one is a whopping 39.2 pounds. And the 915 in its lightweight factory form is 26.2. The flywheel on this one's completely stock, but it does have the lightweight pressure plate. So the pure weight is important, but what really matters in the car is how difficult is it to spin these up into high RPM. So it's this rotation that's important. And there's a little more to it than just the mass. This guy here, I can feel it just, just doing that. It's, it's not only heavier, but it's also harder to spin. So we all know the ice skater analogy when the person you know, has their arms out, they slow down, arms in, they speed up. Well, that's called the moment of inertia, and that's what I'm after today, trying to determine, you know, what is the moment of inertia of these three different flywheels. We're now looking at the flywheel side of these three. These are all set up for Carrera engines. This one has some interesting slots cut out of the outer perimeter. This is like the skater analogy of having your arms moved in. So while it does have weight, it's concentrated towards the center, and lighter on the outside. That is one of the biggest benefits of the Patrick Motorsports one. This guy is, like I said, all stock. It's forged. It's just got a lot of weight here on the perimeter. And this one here has balancing holes in it, but that's, that's it. I learned my lesson on the 356 guys. I uh, had this one balanced prior to going into Mac. So it's kind of interesting to see the evolution of the Porsche story. And even today with some of the aftermarket components available, I think they went with the bigger diameter disc because they, need to they needed to handle the additional torque from the 3.2 liter and also the 3.6, which was coming in the 964. So having a bigger diameter clutch meant that you didn't have to have a stiffer clutch pedal to handle that torque. But they also increased the weight and that just kind of gives a little bit better feel of the car. The cars were getting heavier, so you needed more weight to get off the line. and it just makes it feel smoother, maybe a little bit more sluggish, versus back in the day, they had these lightweight pressure plates that the factory was providing for a little bit more light, nimble, quick feeling. So I thought of a way to spin these up here in the garage, and let's see if we can determine, you know, what is the inertia of each of these three flywheels. This is just a tapered piece of MDF here, just to secure that like so. So these are ball bearings. They uh, don't have much friction, so that shouldn't affect the test, but it'll be the same shaft for all the flywheels. And I have this long string that I'm gonna go ahead and attach here. That's gonna wind up around the axle and then that's what's gonna create the torque to make it spin. Okay, it's now floating. Just wanna to try to get these bearings vertical.
It definitely has wobble to it, you guys, and, and that's partly because of the shaft. I welded the shaft together. It is not a very true system, but at least it spins. This is, like I said, kind of quick and dirty math on this, so I think we should just let it ride. I'm gonna wind the string up a little bit better, and I'm gonna hang a weight off of the string, and that's gonna make it spin with a very controlled torque. This is just a five pound weight. Steady standstill here. See if it spins. And the weight just hit the ground. So that's kind of what I'm after. Okay, I think we're ready to attach the weights and see what happens. So I'm just starting with the loop, even with the flywheel. So here we go. Kind of get out of the way. Boom, hit the ground. So now, you know, this is not part of the test, but it's just slowing itself down as it wraps around the other way. Now it's time for the Patrick Motorsports one. Just winding up the string in the exact same way like a, like a winch so none of the string is overlapping itself because the torque is the distance from the, from the axle, from the center of the axle. So we got to have the string at the exact same distance the entire time of its travel. This is right where we started on the last one. So this loop is even with the flywheel. To me, it looked like it was going a little faster at the end. It kind of took a while to get started, but it did seem to go faster at the end. I'll be able to use some physics software to measure the speed at which it hits the ground. That'll be important. I need a different uh, mandrel for this bearing because it's a different bearing for 915. I could have spent days making mandrels and shafts on the, on the lathe. I think we would have gotten the same result. Some of that wobble, you know, is wasting some energy, but the fact that it's wasting the same energy on all three, I think makes it okay. Really fast. Despite my rinkety-dink and kind of unprofessional setup, I was able to get some good information, some good numbers out of these flywheels. So for instance, this one is the stock flywheel. It reached a maximum RPM at 172. That's when the weight hit the floor. Compare that to the 915, its maximum RPM was 223. And given some software, I was able to use a physics tracking software. I was able to calculate, you know, the velocity right when 
the weight hit the floor. And that allowed me to calculate a bunch of stuff, including the RPM of the flywheel and its inertia. The inertia is just an engineering term for its rotating mass. So the data here shows that there's a dramatic difference in rotating mass between the 915 is 0.14, the stock G50 is 0.24, and the aftermarket Patrick Motorsports is 0.162. It gets pretty close to the 915, but the Porsche 915 lightweight flywheel still is the best of the bunch. To put this into real world implications, I did even more math about sort of the amount of energy it takes to take that stock G50 flywheel and spool it up from idle, you know, 900 RPM, up to the Carrera Redline, which is like 6,200, 6,300. The amount of energy on that is about 50,000 joules, and it's just a number. But I also calculated the amount of energy it takes to accelerate that car, which is like a, you know, 2,800 pound car or whatever. To accelerate that to Redline in first gear is a total energy expenditure of 121,900 joules. So the percentage or ratio of those two amounts of energy, one is the rotational energy to accelerate that heavy flywheel, and the other is the, is the kinetic energy to move the car to RP, uh, redline in first gear, that ratio is about 40%. So 40% of that torque goes into spinning up the flywheel. I calculated how much torque it is. Uh, it's about 32 foot-pounds of torque and if you were to compare that with the 915, it's only 19 foot-pounds of torque. We're getting some dramatic uh, results. Those are in first gear. Now, because the engine has to spin so fast just to get to like 35 miles an hour, that's where the lightweight flywheel will give you the most bang for the buck. Second gear, third gear, and fourth gear, it's gonna have diminishing returns because the time it takes to go from third to fourth, for instance, is a much longer pull. You know, even dyno sheets don't really um, display what the effect of these light flywheels versus heavy flywheels are. The dyno uh, is kind of controlled. The, the rate at which your car accelerates is either controlled by the dyno or you're adding a lot of inertia to the system anyways. So you can't really tell what the effect of the flywheel is on a dyno. You're certainly not gonna be able to see it on a dyno sheet. There are some dynos and some dyno operators who are very good. They, there is a way that you can kind of estimate um, how fast the engine ramps up. Let me know what you think. If you like these kind of videos, I can do some more, potentially on the tires, 15 versus 17 inch, low profile, high, pro you know, high profile, whatever. Um, let me know if you guys like this content and I'll do more. So that's it for now. See you guys next week. Getting ready for Ren Sport. Hope to be there in two weeks. Cheers.